So there's been a lot of talk around the crypto world lately about ETFs. You've heard it on other YouTube videos, crypto news, etc. But how many of y'all are still confused about what exactly they are? How do they affect the price of Bitcoin? How many are there? Which one got denied? And why August 10th is potentially an important date? If you're curious about any of that, then just keep on watching. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin from BFB and welcome back to my Kevin Talks Crypto series where I choose interesting topics from the crypto space, do a deep dive into them, and share with you what I found. So if you find my video interesting or informative, then please support me real quick by smashing that like button and subscribing down below. So first and foremost, what are ETFs? Well, they stand for Exchange Traded Funds and they represent a share in underlying assets, whether it be basket of stocks, gold, or a lot of other types of assets can apply as well. Now, I want to note that there's two different sets of participants when you're talking about ETFs. You have your regular holders and your authorized participants. Now, authorized participants, it sounds fancy because they have to pass a certain set of criteria in order to become one. Now, ETFs are kind of similar to mutual funds, which may serve as a similar comparable investment vehicle for us to think about in our minds. It has differences too, but for the purposes of understanding and getting a feel for what ETFs are, mutual funds are a good one to compare to. Now I want to bring up real quick the role of arbitrage, and this is particularly important in ETFs whenever the price differs between the shares and also the underlying assets, in this case bitcoins. So in that case, the authorized participants would go out and buy, sell, and redeem the shares for actual Bitcoin to kind of get the prices back to normal so they closely track each other. That's why for most ETFs, the price tracks the value of the underlying assets pretty closely, whereas other investment vehicles, they do not. So there's three types of ETFs out there. You have your regular, leveraged, and inverse. Now, in terms of price relations, regulars track the asset prices pretty directly, kind of like we just talked about. Leverage is a multiple of asset prices, so you you can get like 2x change, 3x change, and the inverse moves opposite direction of where the asset prices goes. In regular ETFs, most of the time they actually hold the underlying assets. Leverage, they use like derivatives and margin, maybe with like futures contracts. Inverse, they also use derivatives and margins. Now the time span for which these shares are meant to be held for regular ones is long term, and for leverage and inverse, they're more short term. What about Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin already has an investment fund, if you guys don't remember. It's called GBTC, but the problem for various reasons is that it doesn't really track the price of Bitcoin that well and oftentimes works at a premium for various reasons. So back to ETFs, institutional investors would really like ETFs because this gives them access to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies with potentially regulated brokers and for 401ks as well. So for all those reasons, there's been many applications flooding the SEC's desks trying to get approval for ETFs. But did you know there are three main ETFs swirling around trying to get approved recently? Well, they're first one is New York Stock Exchange, second is the Winklevoss twins of Facebook fame and Gemini, and third is CBOE, which you may also have heard of because of the futures markets. So let's take a look at them one by one. First, the New York Stock Exchange ETF. They have five applications, all of them leveraged, two of those being inverse, and they are based on futures contracts from like the CME and CBOE. So understandably, this does not excite crypto investors as much because those are mainly for like short-term speculation and trading. And also decision on these have been postponed to sometime in September. Next is the Winklevoss ETF and they applied a while back and they got rejected not once but actually twice. What they were trying to do is to get their Gemini exchange to be custodians which means they manage and keep safe the underlying Bitcoin assets but the SEC reasoning was that first there was some concerns about the security of the underlying assets. Second is that they wouldn't be able to properly protect against manipulation and third is because they just want to see the market more mature and have more liquidity, more usage in the futures markets, etc., before they would feel comfortable approving such an ETF. So what is the impact of this ruling? Does this mean that it's going to put a halt on all these other ETFs? Well, not necessarily, because one of the commissioners of the SEC, Hester Pierce, she said that she did not agree with the SEC's ruling for a variety of reasons, saying that it was invalid logic and was going to stifle innovation. So this is positive news that she kind of broke away from her own organization and has people wondering what's next. Is this a boon for the ETFs on the dock? 
pocket? Well, I don't know for sure, but certainly the crypto world has started following her a lot on Twitter, so her social media presence has been getting a steady boost. Last but not least, the CBOE ETF is arguably the most important one. They're partnering with two other investment and finance related firms, and that is VanEck and SolidX. And so they're working together to bring ETF to life for Bitcoin. And this has a lot of cryptocurrency investors really hoping and inspiring for this to happen. And this really shows because they had over 200 comments on their proposal, whereas the New York Stock Exchange one only had two in comparison for the SEC process. So one thing to note is that they're going to be buying Bitcoin over the counter and not through exchanges. And also they're going to have it fully insured against like hacking and theft. So that's great for investors. And finally, in order for them to issue new shares in this ETF, they're going to have to buy additional Bitcoins from over the counter or other markets. So let's take a look at the impacts. And there are a few that I'm going to cover here, but they're all pretty important. So first of all, there may not be a direct impact on exchange prices because they are going over the counter. And they're going to start off with 100 ETF shares. One share equals 25 BTC. That's a lot of money. So only institutions can likely afford this. Initially, they're only going to start off with 2,500 BTC. So if you think about it, that's really not enough to really impact the broader global Bitcoin markets. Just go take a look at coinmarketcap.com. Their daily trading volume is way more than 2,500 BTC. However, if it grows and there's more institutional demand, then they will need to buy more Bitcoin. And eventually it may get to a point where they're buying enough to affect the global markets and increase the demand for everybody. The earliest decision this can happen is on August 10th, but most likely the SEC is going to postpone this. And CBOE themselves is hoping for an early 2019 launch and listing of this ETF. So with the rumor, news and announcements coming, is this going to mean more rallies and dumps? Most likely in my opinion. But besides all those rallies and dumps, hopefully there's going to be a long-term positive impact for the crypto space of a whole if this one is approved when the SEC decides to give its verdict. So last but not least, our favorite crypto figurehead Vitalik Buterin has said that he prefers more crypto adoption at like corner stores and convenience stores to be able to buy crypto from there instead of ETFs. Why? Well, because he thinks ETF might just lead to another unsustainable bubble and FOMO. And that's not good in his opinion because the same thing is going to happen all over again, whereas slow but steady adoption will win the race. Thank you everybody for watching. That's it. I hope you learned something today. If you did, please support me by smashing that like button, subscribing down below, leave me any comments you may have. This is Kevin and I'll catch you guys next time.